I want to walk through the outside of the camera body real quickly. Uh, here's the SYS cards. There's a little button that you depress, pops out the card. Boom, there you go. Right protect tab. It'll tell you which card is active and there's a button here that you can change slots. Boom, boom, just switching back and forth. Here's your menu buttons, your audio levels. Uh, these are assigned buttons, but they're marked histogram, bright display, and lens info. These will turn on all this stuff on your, um, on your screen. Zebra peaking buttons, uh, dedicated this full auto button, the oh shit button. Uh, if you need to eject, <laughs> if you need an airbag, pop that, you're good to go. What's interesting is when you pop on full auto and then turn it off, um, it will remember those settings when you come out of full auto. So for instance, it's actually an interesting way to come in there and just see what the, how the camera would expose automatically that setting. And then you, you're pretty close to, you could tweak the settings. Uh, here's your white balance preset. Then you've got A and B as well. Um, you can set it to A for instance, and then hit there's a white balance button down here. Boom, it auto white balances very quickly. That's useful. Your gain, high, medium, low. I still wish they had like an offsetting here because now if you don't want gain, you've got to change your low to zero and then your other ones to say six and nine or nine and 12. Um, your ND filters, they work just like any other one. Uh, your iris manual auto setting right here, your macro on off, this is completely ele electronic. Um, your, uh, your focus on, uh, manual, there's a push auto focus button down here, so you're in manual and you can push auto. Uh, it's in full manual focus right now. If you want the infinity circle ring, you pop it forward and then it'll spin forever. If you want full manual, you've got hard stops here and here. Now the Sony literature uh, indicated that um, there would be a, a standard gear ring for the Focus, but there's not, as you can tell. So someone's gonna probably sell an aftermarket ring for this, or maybe there's one that already fits. These are geared um, with appear to be uh, industry uh, gearings. This is the zoom ring, hard stops. It's, it stays, but it almost feels chintzy. Uh, what it is, it's completely optical. There's no servo there, so you, you, can, you can go in and out very, very quickly, and it just pops. So that's handy, but it almost feels a little chintzy to me. Um, your iris is very solid, and it's obviously mechanically linked. Um, uh, see down below, there's a shutter off button. It's a switch on off down here. And then there is a a sign button as well. And then down here again, there's a switch which turns your, uh, your zoom from servo to manual. I'm actually just mashing this button on the back side here. And it's, it's a hard one to find uh, when you're not, when you're feeling, when you're holding the camera and you're, and you're just grabbing. So, you know, you got your typical lens hood deal. And then here's how the LCD folds away, which is, I think, a great design. Um, very, very bright LCD. Uh, the problem is, you can do this number right here, but the problem is you've got no tilt up. So we've lost one more axis um, from the Z1 series. Uh, we, we now can't tilt that direction. So uh, handle zoom, high, medium, low off, or, or low, high off, I think, are the settings. And then these are all your playback buttons and then your joy, your joystick is on the top. So here in the bottom of the camera, you've got an, an additional fourth assign button. You can turn your shutter on and off manually with this switch. There's a white balance button. And then this is the servo or manual zoom switch. These are all extremely hard to find. You're, you're clawing around the back of the camera underneath that lens blind while you're trying to hold this behemoth with one hand and you can never find these and there's no indication uh, really besides the shutter one if you if you're very sensitive um, what you got here now the servo zoom switch isn't that hard to get to um, simply because it's the only one down here that slides but I, I think this is all very poor ergonomics and poor um, design uh, as you can see also this handle 
strap is, is on the bottom of this camera, and I guess they probably moved it down there, my guess is because they figured out it was so heavy, but it doesn't really help hold it. I think it, it would be a better design if the handle was up, if the strap was up here, in my opinion. Uh, and then here's some proprietary lens remote uh, port. It is not a length port. Um, there's not a single length port on this thing. Underneath the grip uh, of the camera, there's an SDI out. You can do HD or SD, SDI out. Uh, my camera did not come with a cover for that, which surprised me. Uh, you've got your battery release, which works like any other battery release. Um, up, tucked up underneath this handle here is a little bitty floppy plastic uh, deal with your USB port, your component out, and your AV out. Um, the USB is what you would connect uh, to offload files if you don't have a uh, express card reader. This is the back of the camera. When you hit menu and you, um, you bring up a menu, here's your selection wheel. As you can see, this one's wearing off already because you find yourself doing this all the time. It's slightly recessed, so you can't accidentally hit it, but it also makes it a little bit harder to operate uh, to actually go through the menus. You, sometimes you accidentally hit it. Or, or hit a menu item you don't want to. Auto, manual, channel select, internal and external. Um, then you have dedicated switches for each channel. Here's your picture profile button. You can cancel out of the menu right there. This is your battery pack. With it plugged into DC, you can swap in batteries in and out as you wish. The camera will not reboot on you. Boom. Camera's still on. Boom. You're good to go. There's a battery check light on the back, which is really handy. You know, this one's pretty close to empty. Uh, here's how you turn the camera on and off. Off, media mode, which is VCR essentially. It's recessed, it's hard to get to. You gotta get it with your fingernail, it's irritating. Uh, here's the handle grip on the other side. You've got your, a really, really nice uh, zoom uh, servo set, uh, set up here. Record review will record based on whatever you have in your menu settings. It will re it'll review the last three, 10 seconds, or even the whole clip. Here's your expanded focus button, which does work while you're recording, so that's handy. Um, your record button right here is not red, but it's nice soft rubber, that's cool. The handle release, um, if you hold that button down, allows you to rotate the handle all the way around, and you can stop it, preset, locations, like so. Um, that is really handy. However, this is so far off axis, and this camera is a little heavier than, than some of the other handheld ones I've used. And also, there's something else that, that contributes to this. Um, this hand strap right here is really low. And all of those three things come together to make a camera which is almost impossible to handhold with a single with a single hand. Normally, sometimes you can muscle them. Not so with this one. It's, it's unbelievably uh, difficult to hold. And if, you, if you're holding it right here and you're cradling with the left and you go to change the manual focus or you want to find a, one of those hidden you know, assign buttons on the bottom, you're going you're gonna to lose your shot. I mean, so it's, it's very hard to shoot handheld with this camera.